All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. All right. GG has a, uh, a comment here, and uh, I haven't read it yet, so bear with me. Um, uh, she says, uh, thanks for keep trucking on, brother. Just to clarify, I do not believe the angels are sons of God. And so that's interesting here. Because uh, I want to share this here with Jack McElroy. He uh, has this thing here where he, he shows the difference between the, the King James Bible and the ESV. The King James Bible is clearly right <clears throat> when it says that for God so loved to the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's a distinct difference between only begotten son and only son. The ESV makes it out like uh, Jesus is the only son and you're not. So therefore you're not the son of God or you're not a son of God. Uh, clearly, you know, somebody who's not read John, you know, because it, in the very first chapter it says he um, uh, he had power to, to uh, make us the sons of God. All right. So, uh, but he says here, angels are called sons of God, Job 38, Job 2, 1. Well, he says Job 2, 1 sons of God are angels, but he left, notice he left out Job 1, verse 6, right? And so when you read this, the more, I think the more you read it, the more you become familiar with it, and the more you understand it, if you're looking at it properly, right? So in Job 1, it's clearly taken place on earth. I've heard, I've had people straight up lie to me and say that this was happening in heaven and it's clearly not it, it, if you read the context of it i mean if you read it just read it it's clearly on earth and so if it's on earth and it's sons of god are not angels in chapter one then they are not angels in chapter two and then therefore they can't be angels in chapter 38 right so it'd be you know, if you just just read it, for crying out loud, and again, there was a day. So it's given, it's setting up the same sort of thing that happened in chapter 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And this is not a new thing. This is something that's transpired uh, since the beginning, since Cain and Abel. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. This sort of thing going on since the beginning. <laughs> very, you know, very uh, first children of God were doing this. So this is not a new thing. And so there's no reason at all to, um, you know, believe that the angels just drives me nuts. It really does. All right. So just to clarify here. All right. So it, like I said yesterday, angels are not born with pee-pees and wee-wees. They don't procreate. All right. And then uh, if there was any doubt, you just, you know, do a word search on the word angel. And there it is. Job chapter four. All right. So, boy, you're all kinds of confused. If you think it, you must think that there's an error in the Bible. and that There's just all kinds of confusion because if sons of God are angels in chapter 1 and chapter 2 then why is it using the word angels in chapter 4 if if that's true then every mention of the word sons of god should be changed to angels in fact you might as well call jesus an angel uh, and so i don't <laughs> You know, I could do a whole big thing on this because we are warned against worshiping angels. And let's see. Uh, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding unto those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So. Angels are uh, described as ministering spirits, or uh, oh, what's that? 
how's that uh, how's that worded? Uh, makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. Excuse me. Thank you. All right. So, anyways, let's continue here. There's more I could add to that, but right out loud, you know, it's not going to stop. People, uh, well, it's just some people ain't going to get it until their eyes are open, I guess. So, and uh, to continue, I want to make clear I'm not arguing with you. I respect you a great deal, and you have shown me a great deal in years. I have subbed to you, so thank you. No, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, whether you agree with me or not. I don't care. I just want to know what your thoughts are. And I want, first and foremost, I want you to be honest with what you believe. All right? No matter what, if it if it agrees with me or not. People should know angels are not sons of God. I agree with that, because for one thing, you're a son of God. And, you know, I'm a son of God, and believe me, I'm no angel. All right. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. The word of those angels was not steadfast. They were claiming to be sons of God. All right, so what do you... Uh, maybe I need more coffee. Here, let me read this. They were claiming to be the sons of God. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just... There's more after that, but <clears throat> I think the point is, if we know that angels are not sons of God... We know those angels lied. Okay. We can conclude they lied about being sons of God, which is how they took the woman <clears throat> the woman they desired. I'm not sure what, what are you referring to. We can conclude they lied about being sons of God, which is how they took the woman, the women they desired. I, I don't know. Uh, is there something in the Bible about angels taking women? Because I, I don't see it. I don't recall it. Anyways, certainly not in Genesis 6, but <clears throat> let's go to, let's continue. Excuse me. I hear what you're saying. The point I think you're missing is that people have worshipped many things and been saved by Christ and repented of that worship. The people that worship the image will never be saved. Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. Look at the context of worship. It was a specific thing at a specific time. It's a specific act in the context of the Bible. I just showed you yesterday. Was that Luke 12? Uh, it, it doesn't always mean the act of falling down to your knees, bowing down, and waving your arms. That's my point. Right. <clears throat> okay. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. It does not solely mean to bow down. We are made in God's image. And <laughs> so the thing is, okay, here it is. So... You're thinking that as long as you don't get down on your knees and wave your arms, you're not worshiping the beast. That's your standard. That's not going to work because that, that's nobody's doing that. And the context of Revelation is that the whole world is going to worship the beast. And the whole world does worship the beast, but not in the manner that you're imagining that's what I'm trying to show you, is that common folk, most people worship the beast today, right now. They just don't understand the language. We are made in God's image, and we are His temple. We can conclude there will be false. There will be a false image in a rebuilding of the temple. Exactly, it's not spoken of in the Bible at all. The, Jesus rebuilt the temple, and so I'm going to ask you to show me where you think. The rebuilding of the temple is. I'll give you a hint. You're going to look in Daniel. 